Okay, cool. So um, you might notice that this is a looks a little bit different. Um, I've mostly I grabbed these slides from a previous tutorial, um, so they won't be quite as polished as what we were doing this morning. But so what I want to do with this section in the next uh, what do we have like forty minutes left? About forty minutes. Um, is give you at least a little bit of a taste of how to create your own sim objects. So your own models that then could be used um, to model whatever you want, new accelerators, new kinds of caches, new memories, um, yeah, et cetera, new devices. Uh, okay, so before we do that, before we dive in too far, we need to build Gem5 so we can start modifying the source. So let's go back to our, let's get this started because it's gonna take 20 minutes or so. Um, so let's go back to our code spaces. So we're going to uh, change directories to the Gem5 directory. All right, so now I'm in the Gem5 root directory. And as we kind of mentioned before, to build Gem5, we use this scons build tool. Um, so let me mention a couple of things about this that are actually not on the slides. So um, Gem5, when compiling, has lots of options. So one of the options we talked about this morning is what coherence protocol to include. But there's a lot of other options when uh, creating the Gem5 binary. So to do that, we've given some uh, default build environments. So there's things like all, which compiles all Gem5's ISAs. There's ARM messy three level, which compiles ARM with messy three level. There's Vega x86, which compiles x86 with the Vega GPU and lots of others. So we are going to use null. So um, if you type scons uh, build, so this is where we want the build output to be, null, which is the default um, where we want to get our default arguments for, or default parameters to build Gen5 from. So this matches this null that's in build ops. And then uh, gem5.opt, that will grab the stuff from null and build Gen5. But before I do that, I want to show you if you use instead def config um, to define a configuration for Gen5, null. So I'm going to have a build directory called build null, and I'm going to use the defined configuration from null here. So this is going to set up my build directory um, to build it with the null. OK, so it's done that. And then I can also do something similar to like when you're making the Linux kernel. We also have a menu config um, target. So if you do this after you've done def config, I am missing something. What am I missing? Okay, that's not going to work in the <laughs> code spaces environment. Normally, if you do that, it'll bring up an option for you to um, go in and turn on and off different things in the Gem5 binary, but it looks like it doesn't work um, in code spaces. So instead of doing that, we'll just take all the defaults and null. So scons, build, null. We're going to build gem 5op So these last three um, things here, I'm going to get this started. So we're building gem 5op So there's multiple different Gem5 targets you can build. Opt has uh, compiler optimizations enabled, but it has debug flags enabled as well. So this is useful for running relative, you know, pretty fast um, since compiler optimizations are enabled, but you get to um, actually see the um, debug symbols and do debugging with it. There's also gem5.debug, which has all those debugging symbols, but does not have compiler optimizations. This is, oh, I'm sorry, I should. One other command we need to have here is the number of cores to use, which let's use all eight cores in our code spaces. Going back 
Uh, so gemfuck.debug has debug flags, but does not have compiler optimizations, which is useful sometimes if the compiler is optimized something out when you're trying to debug. Um, and there's also gemfuck.fast, which strips all the debug information and is quite a bit faster than gemfuck.opt because of that. OK. So while Jimbob is building, let's go talk about um, some objects. OK. So almost all of the models in Jim 5, all the objects in the Jim 5 code base are sim objects. This is like our base class that we build on top of. Um, a sim object represents you know, these different models. So things like CPUs, caches, et cetera. There's also the idea of a clocked object, which is a type of sim object. And you'll see most of our models are clocked objects because they're, they have clocks. Um, and this is useful to get like the next cycle or the clock edge um, in the ticks. So you don't have to keep up with what the ticks per cycle is um, in each object. OK, so let's go through adding a new sim object. So there's a number of steps to this. So we're going to have to create a Python class, which is our sim object description file. So this is what allows us to expose the sim object from C++ to Python. We need to implement the object in C++. We need to register the object and the C++ file in the build system. We need to build Gem5, and then we have to write a configuration script of Gem5 to actually use this object. So while Gem5 is building in the background, um, let's do these things. Uh, this link is totally wrong. So let's look at that here. So I'm going to create a new terminal. I'm going to make a new directory, source. Um, tutorial. Um, so all of the Gem5 files that you want to compile need to be in source. So in this source tutorial directory, I'm going to copy in some files from the materials directory. So in materials ISCA24 sim object, I'm going to go and copy all these files. Um, the hello object.py hello sim object.cc and hello sim object.hh into this directory. We don't want to do completed, um, but the completed files are there as well. Missing one file, which we'll get to in a second. OK, so the first step is the sim object declaration file. So this is the um, hello sim object dot py file. So in this file, um, we've already filled in most of this for you. But we say what the type of the object is, which is usually the same name as the class. This class is going to inherit from sim object, because um, it is a sim object. We give the path to the header, which instead of boot camp is tutorial. Uh, yeah. So this is now the path to the header. So you'll have to change that. Um, and then the CXX class is the name of the class that we want to expose as a sim object, which again is usually the same as all the other names, um, except it needs to have the namespace that this is in. Any questions so far? Questions, issues, I those folks are trying to make these same changes along. I know I'm going yeah. kind of fast. Uh, what was that emotion again? What's that argument? Uh, yes. What was that emotion again? I don't believe So what is a sim object? That's the question. Yeah. Yeah. So um, a sim object is, so all of the models in Gym 5, are sim objects. So a sim object is like the main interface we use um, in order to access all of the simulator features. So mostly this would be enqueuing events into the event queue. So in order to enqueue events into the event queue, you need to be a sim object. Does that answer yeah. the question? Yeah, you said things. Sorry, I didn't mean it like that. Oh. Pretty cool. 
just looking around, it seems like folks had things running. Are there any issues you run into or questions you have? I see you have five compiling for a bunch of people. Cool. Anybody else? Okay, great. So I think they're running for folks. So, okay. so we have declared the sim object now. So now the next step is to write the header file. Again, which we've mostly done for you. Um, so everything needs to be in the namespace gem5. You can, um, we have some namespaces within the gem5 namespace as well, but for this, we'll just do uh, gem5. Um, we're going to include this magic header file. So this header file here will magically appear when we build. And this is based off of this sim object declaration file. So whatever class name we use here is the name of this um, header file. So we're going to then call create our C++ class, which is the same name before. Just like um, in Python, we need to inherit from sim object. And then um, in the public namespace, we're going to use this magic header called or um, pound define called params to declare these parameters as hello sim object. And then we need to create a constructor which takes in these params that we've declared here. So we'll see how to pass parameters from Python into C++ in a minute. Um, but for now, just kind of trust me that this is the way the code has to be. Let me double check that there's nothing else that we need here. I think we're good for now. OK. So we've created the sim object description file, the header file, now the C++ file, or the, uh, yeah, the C file. So let's change this path to just be tutorial. Um, so we're going to import our header um, file, lsimobject.hh. Don't worry about this squiggly line. It should go away in a minute. So we just need to define this uh, constructor. And for now, we'll just write C out hello world from a sim object constructor. So, so far, you don't have to make any changes. The only thing we need to do is we need to create a new file called a scon script file. So this is the file that scons is going to use to know what to build. So in this file, let me bring this up for myself to make sure I don't do any typos. So give me one second. Great, okay. So in this file, um, we are going to essentially just declare that we have a sim object and what C file we need to compile. So uh, in scons, you have to type this import star thing. Then we're going to declare a sim object um, which is the hello sim object. So it's in the file hello sim object.py. And the name of the sim object is hello sim object. Then we need to compile the C, uh, the C file which is hello sim object.cc. And we might have more here later. But this is what we need to do to um, get this with the, get it into the build system. So hopefully there's not too much more that we need to do to build. It looks like things are on my end are getting pretty close. Um, so I am actually going to kill this build and rebuild with my new um, hello sim object. Any Thanks questions up. about that? For example, why he killed the build when he created this new object? Yeah, that's a good question, Matt. Um, I think the one thing that helps me is in general, if you make a change to anything in the source directory, so if we're in this source directory, so right now we're in source tutorial, um, if you make a change there, you need to rebuild Gem5 in order for it to propagate. So even if you're changing Python files, like this hello sim object 
gem.py. If it's in the source directory, you need to build gem, rebuild gem.py. Yep. Is that clear to folks in the room? Questions why he did that? Okay. Keep going. Well, we kind of have to wait for a minute um, as this builds. Let me go, I'll go back over to the slides and see if there's anything. Um, yeah, we can talk about this some. So uh, in helloobject.py that we saw, um, there's a couple of things I'm not sure if we saw from m5.params import star, um, but that line is saying that there's all these different parameters we can pass from Python to C++. So that gets all those different parameters that we can pass. So this would be things like memory size. So we saw before, for instance, we could say the cache size was like 32 kilobytes and Gem5 figured out what that meant um, in terms of bytes. And so that's what a memory size param is. Then we have the type, which is the C++ class name, the CXX header, which is a header file where we can find that type, um, and then the fully qualified uh, C++ class name. So we saw this um, in the uh, header file. So this params file is automatically created. We can go look at that in a second. Um, and then the constructor just has a similar, a single parameter, which must be a const reference. Otherwise you get linker errors. And then we implemented the actual um, C++ object um, like this. So a little bit more about the scon script file. So the import is a weird scons thing. The sim object is saying that there's a Python file called helloobject.py that contains this particular sim object. The source says to compile this uh, CC file. And the sim objects are all the sim objects that are in this um, sim object declaration. So now we are currently rebuilding Jimbo. So let's see how that's going. We're still going. Um, while that's going, what I will do is I will show you that automatically created file in case you're interested. So um, we created this build null directory when we configured the build. And then all, everything is like copied in or linked in to this directory when it's actually built in. One, except, um, and also in this build directory is a bunch of auto-generated files. Um, which is generated by Gem5 as it's being built. So one, for instance, is going to be this params directory. So let's see if we can find our hello.cc. Um, what was the name of our hello sim object? So let's see if we can find hello sim object. Questions? because it hasn't been created yet. But we can look at this hello object, which is similar. So this is an automatically created thing. This has a little bit more because this has parameters in it, but essentially it automatically creates this uh, create, or automatically does this create function, um, which returns um, that object. Yeah, too bad it's not there yet. I think I, at least me, I don't know about others, but we must have gotten some slow VMs this afternoon. Have any of you gotten the no build to complete or is it still running? Still running for them too. Yeah. Um, let's see, what else can I say while we're waiting for that? Well, maybe while we're waiting for that, um, I will continue on to the next step um, just for the sake of time. So often what you're going to want to do is, you know, the models in Gem5, one of the points of doing it this way, exposing things to Python, is so you can pass parameters from your Python configuration file or from the standard library into the C++. So, Let's add two parameters um, to our um, file. 
one called time to wait and another called time to fires. So the idea with this, um, what we're gonna do is create an object which is going to fire some event, some number of times and have a latency in between um, each of those events. So let's uh, do this. So we go back to our sim object declaration file, and this is where we put our parameters. So I'm going to do time to wait. So let me make sure to import my params. So time to wait is going to be param.latency. Um, and And this, uh, what I'm passing in here is the argument is a little bit of help for the user to explain to the user what this um, parameter is supposed to do. And then we're also going to do uh, number of fires. So the number of times that we want to do this. I'm going to do an integer param here. I'm going to default it to the value one and then say the number. Can you of... hear us, Jason? Great. Okay. So now that we have these two parameters, we're going to go in and mon um, actually try to use these parameters um, from our, let me, so from the header. So we're going to make a few changes here. So one thing we're going to do is um, in the private space, we are going to declare a latency that we're going to use between each of these um, greetings. And we're also going to count the number of times left to greet. So another thing we're going to do is we're going to use our event-driven programming um, to actually do this, these greetings. So we're going to declare a function called process event that we're going to use to process the event. For events in Gen 5, these um, functions need to be a void function that takes in no parameters. And then we're going to declare an, uh, a, a wrapper around this function for the event. Um, and this is a little bit different than even the completed version, because this has changed in the last uh, version or two of Gem5. So we're going to declare a what's called a member event wrapper, which has type this class, hello sim object. Um, so the type that we're going to use um, for this event wrapper is this function here. And then we need to give it a name, which is going to be, we'll call it the next request event. OK, so now we've declared this um, function wrapper, and uh, this as well. And then we're going to add one more um, thing here, which is going to be uh, we're going to override one of the sim object functions called startup. So sim objects have a number of ways to initialize them. One of them is the constructor. And another important um, another important function in some objects initialization is startup, which gets called just before uh, the simulator the simulation starts the simulation. Uh, I'll leave this here for a minute um, for people to copy. But any questions? Any questions? Are folks still compiling or have any questions about these this new wrapper that Jason's adding? Yeah, I'm sure people are still compiling. <laughs> yeah, I, I think, think I can... everyone's back in the room, but I think things are still compiling. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, basically, everybody's compiling. Okay. Okay. So while we're still compiling, let's go back to our sim objects. So we have these uh, two new variables. Let's initialize them, see how that works. 
So in our constructor, we have um, two new variables that we need to include. Let me put my header file over here so we can see these. There we go. Okay, so we have latency and times left. So latency, we wanna use this from the params that we have. So we're gonna take params dot, we look here, the time to wait. And that's what we wanna use for our latency. So the params comes from the sim object description file. So we can take this variable and actually use it um, here as uh, a parameter to the latency. Yeah, I'm not too surprised that this is crashing because I haven't defined that yet. So I'll get back to that in a minute. So we have the latency, and then we also want to do the other thing that we need is times left. Um, which we want to use the number of fires. So in this case, we're gonna do rams dot number of fires. So then we'll count down with this. Okay. So we also need to define this function um, process event, I believe is what we called it. Let me look and see. Yes, process event. So in this event, we are going to say, hello. I'll note for a moment that you should never use standard C out um, in your simulations. We have debug flags in Gem 5 to make this a much more user friendly. Um, but for sake of time, we're going to do this here. Um, when we process the event, we're also going to um, subtract one from times left. And then if times left is greater than zero, we are going to schedule an event. Um, the next request event at time, the current tick plus the latency. Give me one second while I make sure that I'm not doing anything wrong. Um, else, um, we'll print that we're done. Okay. And the last thing we need to do, should have been fine. We need to say void. is the um, startup function. So for this function, um, what we wanna do is, uh, let's go ahead and just print something for fun. And then let's, um, Schedule the first um, event at time at latency in the future. So startup is gonna be called right before the simulation starts. So we're gonna schedule an event. You always schedule your events in startup. And then when this event fires, it's gonna execute this um, function. It's going to check to see if we're complete or not. If we're not complete, it's going to reschedule itself for some time in the future. And I think that is it. So let's see if this compiles. Questions?
other than why yep. are you going to go Sorry, let me get you my So I guess which uh event is it processing? How does it know uh which function to call here? When yeah, the event so it knows it knows which function to call based on so the next request event. Um okay. we've said to we've told it to use process event. Um and as far as the um like which event it should do, we could put an assert here um, that this event, next request event, um, so we could say that we assert that this event is not scheduled. And so then when we schedule it here, it'll be okay. So this event will only be scheduled once. Got it, thanks. Yeah, that's a good question. Okay, what did I screw up here? Anybody else? Any issues compiling it or questions for Jason while we're at a stopping point here? Things still compiling? Oh, you have a question? So that's a warning, not an error. But if you scroll up, it looks like you do it. You have some other sort of error. All right. So one thing I forgot here is to declare my next request event. Yeah, and let me look to see. Yeah, the answer. Then we'll keep moving. I don't know why I chose to do this, but I, for some reason, decided to do this a little bit differently than what I'd done before. Um, so give me one second here. Ah, okay. So this needs to be so you need to pass in to next request event, you need to pass in the current object that you're in. Coding examples never go smoothly. Just to um to the air, the warning you're bringing up before, if you were just looking at Jason's screen, you can see that he also got that capstone.h warning, but he's able to progress past there. So that's why I don't think that's the problem. Yeah, you can definitely ignore that. Um, either Matt, Matt Perimba or Matt Sinclair. Do you mind if I go um, five to 10 minutes over here? I guess we have um, a it'll go into the coffee break, break, but since we, you know, had IT issues, I think that's fine. If people need to step out for a minute that they can. Yeah. Okay. Let's, um, yeah, let, let's see if we can push through this real fast. Otherwise. So I guess actually, okay, I'll tell you what, this is still compiling, but what we can do is look at the version that's already done in Jump 5. <laughs> Maybe that's what we'll do. Um, so if you look at configs learning Jump 5, so the next step in this, let me jump back to my thing real fast. So we did all this, blah, blah, blah. We're doing this. So what's missing, and I, sorry. We already did this. Okay, I don't have any of these slides. So um, we created our semi description file. We created our C++ and um, C++ files, we declared it in scans, we're rebuilding Jump 5, and the other thing we need to do is create a config file. So in uh, Learning Jump 5 Part 2, there is a run simple um, script. So this is what we would have written had we not had issues with compiling and stuff. 
So this script is not using the standard library. This script is directly using the M5 um, library. And the M5 library is what is directly wrapping all of these C++ objects. So you can import all the objects that are declared as sim objects by doing from m5.objects import star. Um, there is a root sim object that you have to create in every simulation. Um, so we declare the root and then we're not using full system mode. Then we can create a variable, um, a member variable of root called hello, which is our sim object. So this is the simple simple object is what we called it um, in the gem5 source. Then you have to instantiate all these objects. So this goes through and actually creates all the uh, C++ objects. And then you can call m5.simulate. And so if we run this, so I'm going to, all right, so I'm in the gem5 directory. So I'm going to use uh, just the gem5 binary that's pre-compiled and run configs learning gem5, run simple. Oh, sorry, learning gem5, part two, run simple.py. And so you can see it prints hello world from a sim object, beginning simulation, and then it ends. Um, and you can also see, although it seems like we're not gonna really have time to do that, um, this hello goodbye, which is this complete um, system. So. We could have said time to wait was two microseconds. The number of fires was five. In this case, there's another sim object that it's talking to. So you can see this example for that. Um, and if we do, in this case, I think we have a debug flag is, um, cannot remember what the name of this debug flag is. So adding debug flags, oh, that's the wrong file. Give me one moment. Um, so you're gonna declare debug flags as well. So we'll use this hello example debug flag, um, run this and we can see that we're doing hello, goodbye, processing an event some number of times using this event-driven simulation. And then in the goodbye object, we actually fill a buffer. And so this is an example of how to fill a buffer. Um, so you keep in queuing events until the buffer is full, and then we exit um, from the event. So if you're interested in learning more about this, I know this has been super quick, um, a couple of suggestions. One is there's documentation on uh, the Gem5 website and also in this repo under modules, developing Gem5 goes through all of this on how to do it, how to do these things. Um, there's examples of this simple hello, goodbye. Um, there is examples of interacting with memory, which we haven't, I'll talk about for a moment. Um, there's examples of creating a simple cache um, as well to kind of see how things build up. Thank you. I know this has been really fast. Um, questions? Yeah, that's what I expected. Everybody's a little bit overwhelmed. So real fast, I'm gonna talk sorry, about- Sorry, sorry, Jason, we're trying to help people with errors. Um, I wasn't yeah, ignoring. Um, so at least a couple of students have had this error saying param is not defined. I'm pretty sure that's because they're missing an import, but I was trying to look through the completed one to point them to it. Do you have it yeah. hand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, um, give me two secs. Right, so you can see Jason, he has those two things imported, but you only have the second one. So you're missing that first line 28 that Jason has highlighted. Yeah, my bad. I think that was a typo on my end. That's fine. I mean, anyways, there's a few people who are having this error, and I was pretty sure this is the problem, but I just didn't have your, yeah, your solution I know. up in front of me. 
Do oh, work caused? Do other people have different errors that are not shown here? I know as I was walking by, I saw people's code still compiling, which is uh, unfortunate. But any, it looks like maybe you've gotten things to run exactly the same as Jason. It compiled. Good. So are you able to run then? Oh, it's still compiling. Yeah. That's unfortunate. Yeah. Um, um, I missed what your question was though, Jason, while we were helping debug, what, what, what were you asking? I was just going to say just real quick, I was going to go through this, um, interacting with memory, a few slides, and then I'll stop after this. Okay. So, um, interacting with memory is really important. So in Gem 5 to interact with memory, we use ports and send packets across ports. So packets kind of contain everything that you need to interact with memory. So it contains the data, it contains the command, it contains the request, these kinds of things. So um, the memory command could be a read request or a read response or a write request or a write response. It uh, can, And then the address, of course, that you're trying to access and then the data as well. So if we, we don't have time, but if we were to go through the simple memory object example, um, the CPU core would send packets to the simple memory object, which would then forward the packets onto it. So ports are really cool because essentially if something has a port, you can always connect them together. Um, there are different uh, types of ways you can send things across the port. You can either send it across in timing mode, in atomic mode, or in functional mode, um, which I'm not gonna go into detail here right now. So there's a bunch of things that you need to implement. And I kind of just wanna show these few pictures. So we have two different kinds of ports in Gem5, a request port, which sends requests, and a response port, with re which re receives requests and sends responses. So um, this is done in a way that you can model back pressure. So if you send a timing request and the response port can't handle it, the response port can return false and say, I can't do this right now. But if it does accept it, it can return true. And then sometime later, it will call send timing response. So this is how we like decouple the timing from senders and receivers. So this is an example where, where the responder is busy. In this case, it returns false. At some time in the future, the response port will say, okay, I might not be busy anymore. Request port, you can try to retry that request and then it will retry the request. There's the request port similarly could be busy when the response port sends a response as well. Which is, I think what this is. Yeah. So essentially when you end up creating these memory objects um, that do, that have different kinds of ports. So in this case, this, Simple memory object has a CPU side and a memory side port. You have to implement all these functions. And I guess I'll just show you this picture and not talk through it too much. But essentially, um, this is all the functions you have to implement and how they interact um, with one another. So again, we don't have time for this, but if you're interested, all this is written up in prose on the Gem5 website under the learning Gem5 uh, section. Um, we also have videos from prior tutorials and the boot camp two years ago um, as well. So I was going to go through um, developing with Gem5, but unfortunately we don't have time for that. Um, I'll just kind of leave it there and say that, you know, we'd be super excited to have you as part of the community. Um, we would love to see your pull requests, um, help you out in either on G the GitHub discussions or in the Gem5 Slack. Um, yeah, I'd be happy to answer any questions now as well. Any additional questions for Jason? Okay, well, um, we will pause now for a coffee break. Let's come back 